Jackie Chan uses the elbows of his partner to battle a bad guy in Operation Condor, yet another example of the way he has combined action and broad comedy to become one of the world's most popular stars. The plot is pretty goofy, involving Nazi gold buried in the North African desert, along with this convenient wind tunnel that provides a... The plot is paper thin, the characters are silly, and yet the movie works and is entertaining in the same way silent comedies are entertaining because the central character is a strong comic character with great timing and coordination, and we like him. Jackie Chan may be an acquired taste, but I've acquired it. I've acquired it, too. Uh, you've heard this story before when I asked the, uh, George C. Scott, how do you decide the really good actors from the stars? And he said, a joy of performing yes. quality. I mean, Jackie uh -huh. Chan has it. it. You know, he's on there. I'm out to please you. I'll do anything. I'll risk my own life to make you laugh and enjoy yourself. And that's what happens in the picture. It's a lot of fun. Coming up next, the re-release of an important motion picture from the 1960s. Jean-Luc Godard's domestic drama, Contempt, co-starring Brigitte Bardot. Our next film up for review is nothing less than a masterpiece, I think. New Wave French director Jean-Luc Godard's 1963 film, Contempt, about life and work, about marriage and the movies. Michel Piccoli stars as a screenwriter who has his eye more on his paycheck than on his attractive wife, played surprisingly well by Brigitte Bardot, who proves here that she is a true actress and not just a sex kitten. Her character isn't happy about being dragged along to the Roman villa of a lecherous Hollywood film producer played by Jack Palance. Back home, tension begins to flare between the writer and his wife. This is handled in a totally credible, measured way. Pourquoi tu penses être pensif? Figure-toi que c'est parce que je pense à quelque chose. Later, on location in Capri, the writer makes another decision that essentially sells out his wife to the producer. Paul. Do you mind if your wife comes along with me? That is a powerful moment. Contempt is also very wise about the world of filmmaking, featuring no less than the legendary director Fritz Lang as the director of the movie they're all working on. It's a version of the Odyssey, and Contempt makes very clear that you don't have to be a Greek legend to go on an epic journey. Each one of us does so with our everyday lives. Let me put it directly. Godard's Contempt, in this newly restored version, which I saw for the first time in my life, is one of the great films I have ever seen. I really thought it was terrific. Uh, I can't rate it that highly, wow. Gene. Uh, I feel that, uh, as so often in the case of Godard, whose work I have always found to be very interesting and intriguing, uh, he objectifies and pushes us out and makes us see the surface and keeps telling us it's a movie and adds particular camera movements and other devices in order to prevent the emotions from being realized and being expressed fully. Roger, you heard me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you I heard it, you, and I can't and explain my, it. My deep, my, I mean, my deepest emotions, mm -hmm. I think it's all there. I don't think, and by the way, I think that you know, the intellectual charge against uh, Godard, mm -hmm. if that's what you're making, mm -hmm. can be valid in some of his films, but not in this one. I think this is, this is probably the most human of Godard films, which is why it stand, well, stood out so much for I'm me. I'm glad you liked it so much. I think yeah. it's a good film, too, but I would certainly not categorize it as one of the greatest films of all time by well, any I didn't means. Call I one feel of the, I one, one of the, the great things that, yeah, it, one of the problems is Fritz Lang is an icon. It's wonderful to have Fritz Lang in the movie, but as a performer, he is rather disappointing, and Jack Palance, as a matter of fact, sticks out like a sore thumb. Not the original casting would have been Kim Novak, Frank Sinatra. That might have been interesting. Now, I'll tell you that uh, I, Palance, for me, was dead on. I didn't find him sticking out at all. And Lang has some wonderful things about, you've always got to shoot the movie. There's a great moment there, and I think he delivers that line very well. When we come back, my video pick of the week, Kenneth Branagh's stunning version of Hamlet. Hey, Nestle Raisinets. At the movies or at home, Raisinets. 
When Kenneth Branagh's magnificent version of Hamlet was released late last year, the good news was that it was a full-length, uncut, complete version of Shakespeare's play. And the bad news for some moviegoers was that they had to sit there for all four hours of it. I found it exciting and absorbing, but I know some moviegoers are simply too restless for a four-hour movie, and so the video version of Hamlet, which is being released this week, will give them a chance to hit the pause button every now and then, just as the original viewers of Shakespeare's play at the Globe Theater could take a break between acts. Branna starred as the troubled prince of Denmark in a drama staged on a magnificent set, including a throne room lined with mirrors, allowing Hamlet to literally ask himself one of the most famous questions in literature. To be... Or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. This is one of the greatest of all Shakespeare films, and it's my video pick of the week. I like the two. And now, a special program note. Three weeks ago, Roger and I reviewed a movie called The Last Time I Committed Suicide, about Beat Generation icon Neil Cassidy, who inspired such writers as Jack Kerouac, Ken Kesey, and poet Lawrence Ferlinghetti. Time is now, and now is all we have. Well, I like the film, but Roger said he found it to be a major bore, and our conversation ended with this impromptu challenge. Was. Jack Kerouac, and I'm sure Ferlinghetti, who is alive, yeah. and maybe watching this show, would probably laugh at this movie. We'll find out. I will try and contact Lawrence Ferlinghetti and ask if he laughed at the movie. Well, I guess we can count Mr. Ferlinghetti as a viewer because he saw the movie and our program and wrote us this response, agreeing with Roger's negative vote, saying, in part, and I quote, it's hard to decide who's committing suicide in this film, perhaps the director. He goes on to say that the actors playing Cassidy and a pal are too clean cut and seemed to be from the wrong class. In real life, he says, Cassidy was the son of a skid row working stiff and that the film, and again I quote Mr. Ferlinghetti, is a ludicrous comment on the whole heterosexual part of the beat generation. And it's signed, Love and Kisses, Lawrence Ferlinghetti. Well, first of all, it's great to hear from you, Mr. Ferlinghetti, and don't worry. Roger's been wrong about movies before, and he's now in very distinguished company. I can't claim to know the truth of Neil Cassidy as you do, but as a movie, I found the specific portrait of Cassidy as a man who couldn't commit to a woman as quite provocative. The hard-drinking, hard-writing life and that kind of behavior are not exactly strangers in history. I enjoyed the lead performances by Thomas Jane and Keanu Reeves. I enjoyed the last time I committed suicide and also your letter. Well, Mr. Ferlinghetti, uh, I'd like you to forget everything that Gene just said. All he did was just recycle his original erroneous review. And you and I, especially you who knew Neil Cassidy, and I who know him through the character Dee Moriarty in On the Road, the wonderful book by Jack Kerouac, will treasure that memory and not allow it to be tarnished by this latter-day week recycling. Now let's take another look at the movies we reviewed this week. Two affectionate thumbs up for the goofy George of the Jungle with Brendan Fraser as a likable ache man. Two very enthusiastic thumbs up for Mrs. Brown with strong performances by Judy Dench and Billy Connolly. Two thumbs down, though, for Nothing to Lose, which has its moments, but not nearly enough of them. Two thumbs up for Jackie Chan's combination of stunts and broad comedy in Operation Condor. And two thumbs up for Jean-Luc Godard's Contempt. Gene thinks it's one of the best films ever made. You can check our votes and hear our reviews of recent movies at our website. The address is www.siskel-ebert.com. That's it for this week. Next week, we'll be back with reviews of more new movies, including Harrison Ford and Air Force One. That's next week. And until then, the balcony is closed.